What's up with you? For today's video, we're the full pseudo electric type Pokemon team. Now, this team is made up of Pokemon that could possibly be electric types. There was a lot of suggestions for this team, and I could think of a lot of Pokemon too. Now, I tried to do individual typings or new typings for every single Pokemon to make things fresh. Now, if you do want to check me out, Twitch people, this is where I do all my theme teams, live Pokemon sweeps, all other forms of salty entertainment here, people. Come and give me a follow. Uh, the link is in the description of the video. Today, we got two battles, and I really hope you enjoy them. They were very, very electrifying. Man, I've been super busy in real life, so I'm sorry about the uh, lack of uploads for the last couple of days. I've been very busy. Hopefully, I can get my schedule together and get back to our normal, uh, almost uh, daily uploads. Okay, so the first opponent here, this one was against Malzba, and we got a Gyarados. Now, this is pretty funny, right? I've got my Porygon Z as a electric and normal type because, you know, uh, computers, it's basically like a computer. It gets the ability to download and it learns a lot of electric type moves. So I definitely feel this could be a pseudo electric type Pokemon. Now, I got an attack boost and then Gyarados got rid of that attack boost with Intimidate. Not that it really matters, right? Because I'm running a Zap Cannon conversion, conversion two set with Trick Right and Ring Target. What I'm going to be doing right is going into a electric type here. Conversion changes your type to the first move you got in your slot. So I had Zack Cannon, so it changed me to an electric type right. Now we're going to have a Hyper Beam Gyarados. Only on Beam Rush Channel, right? And it's going to do a fair whack of damage to me there. Now Zap Cannon is going to slide on by that Gyarados, and it's going to slide on again, so I missed two of them. Now we've got the Gyarados going for a Rain Dance here, so clearly it's a, uh, a special set. Now my opponent is also running a Team Team, so if you can guess what the Team Team is, Leave a comment in the comment section below. So I'm going to miss the, uh, that was the third Zap Cannon there I missed. Now it's going to have Whirlpool. I thought I meant up Hydro Pump. So Porygon Z is going to be trapped in here. Not that I was really going to swap or anything like that, right? Now I've got probably one more shot at trying to take this out. Zap Cannon is going to miss again. Oh man, I missed four Zap Cannons in a row. I tried, people. I, I tried so hard. And uh, in the end, it never really mattered. So bye bye Porygon Z. And also got critted by Whirlpool as well. Man, that's a, such a salty start. Okay, next Pokemon. Now, this one's probably a little bit of a stretch. We got Rhyperia as an electric and ground type. So, it's got the ability as Lightning Rod. Also, its shiny is look very electrifying with that yellow color. And it also has a lot of electric type moves that it learns, right? So, I thought it could definitely suit that uh, for a ground and electric. So, it's sort of an interesting typing there. So, we're going to go for a Rock Polish Weakness Pulse set. Whirlpool slides on by. I was actually trying to get a Weakness Pulse from that. But I was also a little bit worried that Whirlpool may actually one-shot me too. So I did take a bit of a risk there. Now, at this stage, I don't want to take this out with the Max Lightning, right? Because I want them to activate my Weakness Pulse. So I thought, I can't use Max Quake because obviously it's a flying type. I want to do some damage to it. So let's go for Max Flare, get rid of the Rain, right? Do a bit of damage to the Garrus, then hit it with a Max Lightning after I get my Weakness Pulse boost, right? Now, of course, the ability on this one was Lightning Rod as well. I tried to get a lot of Lightning Rod boost with this, but it was difficult, uh, especially with the Pokemon that I had on my team, of course, right? So now we're going to go for the Dynamax right here. I must say, I do like that shine. Those big golden plates on it look very, very nice. Now, Gyarados is going to obviously get out sped in now that I've got a Rock Polish up. The EVs on this one were Max Speed and Max Special Attack, and I gave it modest nature there, trying to get as most out of its horrible Special Attack as possible, right? So now we've got the sun up there, getting rid of that rain. And the Gyarados is going to be going for a Whirlpool. I would have been quite salty then if I missed. Because, like, imagine, right, if I kept going for Max Flare and Whirlpool kept missing. And then I never got a weakness posse. And then after the sun went, the Whirlpool took me out. I was having nightmares about that. Anyway, it's all good, though. It never happened. And I'm going to get my uh, weakness posse boost. Now I can go for a, uh, a Max Lightning and take this Gyarados out in one shot. Also, I can put the, uh, you know, the Max Lightning, uh, the terrain on the field for the Max Lightning there. So it's going to be very, very handy. So Gyarados is going to be going down in one shot. And we finally took it out. We avenged the Porygon Z. Also, the Porygon Z was max speed and max special attack as well there. I had Timber Nature uh, as the ability there too. And item was Ring Target. So say if I come across like a ground type, right? I could trick them the Ring Target and do that, which would be pretty fun. So the next Pokemon to come out is Moistress. That's actually a really good name. Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a play on Mistress and Moist because sometimes you got to... Actually, more than often you need to keep things moist, if you know what I mean. So we got a Dynamax Gudra here, right? And this is not going to be good. It's going to be bad. Now, Gudra is very, very thick on this special side, right? And it can have grass moves, 
water type moves, there's a lot of scary things that it can have. If it does have a water move, I'm quite confident I could live at least one attack because the sun is out and I am in Dynamax, right? So go for that Max Quake to bolster my special defense and, you know, get some uh, decent damage on the Gudra. And it doesn't do a bad amount, so I'm happy with that. It's about a 4 to 5 hit KO. Coming off right here is terrible special attack. Now Gudra is going to go for a Max Geyser. That's good because I've got a plus 1 in special defense. And if it is a, uh, I'm assuming it's definitely a uh, special move there. And, you know, right here is going to take that one well. The next one I'm not going to take well. I'm going to get absolutely destroyed. So I needed as much damage as possible. Then I was sort of thinking, yeah, right. Okay, amount of Dynamax. What's Earth Power going to do? Nothing, right? Let's go for Thunder and let's see if I can get a Paralyze, right? Considering I've got 100% actually from the run. So I don't get the Paralyze there. Now the Gudra is going to go for a Max Ooze. I'm guessing they expected me to swap there. Or they just wanted to boost their special attack. You know, another additional plus one there. So this is my last chance to get a, uh, a Paralyze on the Gudra and maybe get some good luck here. It's doing very minimal amounts of damage and Gudra does not get Paralyzed after both hits. So bye-bye right here. It was worth a shot. Look, I could have gone for one Earth Power and another, and it still wouldn't have taken out, right? So I still think it was worth a try. It was an unwinnable situation. So uh, my right here is going to get... I got critted again. That's like that happened to my Barrygon Z as well. So bye-bye uh, right here and hello, uh, Zapdos Gallum. Now, this is interesting. So I'm not sure if you watch my other pseudo uh, teams here, but I use Moltres in one of them. Now, this Pokemon, Zapdos, doesn't learn any Electric-type moves at all. None. So the best move I could give it was Thunderous Kick, right? Which could possibly be a electric type move. Like it sounds like one Thunderous Kick. It also sounds like a fighting type move too, but Thunderous Kick could definitely be an electric type move. And you know, that was my, I guess you could say that was my pseudo electric move I had on it, right? Now this was a mix attacker with Screech and Throat Spray, Thunderous Kick, Hurricane and Ancient Power. I gave this one max speed and I gave it max special attack there because Screech was already dropping the defense of the opponent and, you know, its base attack was uh, like a lot better too, right? So I can go for a thunderous kick here. The my opponent has negative two in defense and I've got a little bit more attack stat here, so I thought that'd be better. Plus, Gudra, as I mentioned earlier on, is very bulky on the special side. So it's going to have Rocky Helmet as the item. I don't faint, which is good. And Gudra is going to go down, which is uh, very, very good. Now, the next Pokemon to grace its presence on the field here is going to be the Charizard. So it's like, wow, I've got Ancient Power. This is going to be really good because it's four times right. You know, I wish I'd see like a shiny Charizard one of these days. I'm sick of all these normal Charizards. So we're going to go for Ancient Power here. I've got APP. I'm loaded up, baby. And this is going to take the Charizard out in one shot. So that was really, really good. I was actually not going to put Ancient Power on the Zapdos set, but I decided to in the end for a bit of coverage, right? I was thinking, look, if I come across the Charizard, this will be really handy, right? And it happened. It was awesome. Now, next Pokemon to fly into the battle is going to be Aerodactyl. It's going to be a physical set. Dragon Claw is going to obviously take me out there. And Aerodactyl's very fast, too. So bye-bye, Zapdos, but you did a pretty good job there. Next Pokemon I've got is Electric Water, which is the Whiskash. Now, Catfish can have, um, they can actually have some, ele like, electric waves, I think. I'm not sure if that's the right terminology and stuff like that. You All you animal people probably know this. But Catfish can have, like, I think they're electronic sound waves or electronic current. No, electronic sort of current, right? And that's why I put Whiskash as an electric water type. It also learns Spark as well, which I thought was really cool. And I've used Spark uh, Whiskash a couple of times there. It can actually can get people off guard. So I decided to run this really, really scummy set there. You've got to try and paralyze the opponent with Spark, right? Try and spark up that relationship. Once you get the paralyzed, right, then you can go for Swagger and Whirlpool and just basically trap the opponent so they can't do anything. It takes 69 turns though, and the 20 minute time it just loves it. It lasts for like a good five minutes. Fortunately, right, with this Aerodactyl, I had two super effective moves, so I had Whirlpool and Spark, so it was definitely not going to be living very much. Now we got the Aerodactyl go for Hyper Beam here, and it's another Hyper Beam Pokemon, and that does pretty good damage to my Whiskash, considering Aerodactyl's horrible special attack and the EVs that I put on my Whiskash, right? Now this Whiskash set was a Max Health set, and I've also got max special defense. It's got pretty good, uh, you know, defensive stats, so I just left it as is. And I gave it, uh, I think I gave it just a sassy. I think I just boosted the special defense to the hills. Next Pokemon is, it's a shiny Dragonite. How, how dare they? Now, I've got to take this shiny Dragonite, right? So I'm going to be going for the Spark there. And on Spark, right, I get the Paralyze on the first turn, which is very, very good, right? So I'm going to get that free round of leftovers recovery there. So I can go for a Swaggy out, so I can Swagger the uh, Dragonites will be Power Fusion. And then I can set the Whirlpool up, so then it can't obviously swap there. The thing about this is I'm not going to be 
be able to do a lot of damage to the Dragonite, so it may be better, right, to go for Swagger just, like, three times. If the Dragonite does have a physical move, I might be in a lot of trouble, though, because, like, it'll just one-shot me like a drag block. Now it's going to go for Hype Beam as well. Another Hype Beam Pokemon. Is this a full Hyper Beam team? I could be wrong. Uh, you know, really, are they, I think they've all got Hype Beam, just looking at all these Pokemon. They all learn Hype Beam, so my guess it's either... You probably guess right now what the team is. You've seen most of the team. My guess is either going to be a Hyper Beam team or it's going to be a Lance team, I think. I think that's about my two guesses there for the team. Anyway, so we're going to get some more Leftovers Recovery on my Whiskash. I need to make sure this dragon not like faints itself to this Swagger, right? I need to get as many Swaggers up as possible. Let's say they've got... Let's say they don't have any physical moves at all, right? And they're purely a special attacker. Like, three Swaggers will definitely still do a lot of damage to a Dragonite because his attack stat is high, right? Uh, so go for another spark there, and Dragonite is going to hit itself with Confusion, and that was pretty good damage, right? The only bad thing is this Dragonite does have Leftovers, exactly like my Whiskash, right? So it's going to take a while to actually take this Pokemon out. I'm going to need a good couple of Swagger hits Maybe like two more to take it out uh, with the Whirlpool damage as well. Like Whirlpool's basically getting rid of that Leftovers, which is very, very good. So go for Swagger. It's going to slide on right past the Dragonite. Dragonite is still going to be confused here, which is good. And now it's going to get another Hyper Beam off on my Whiskash. So I was like, uh-oh, this is bad. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to live like this one. And I don't. It takes me out. Man, I thought I would lift that. And it was a critical hit. I was like, no wonder. So wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Probably got critted on its last hit. Rhyperi got credit on its last hit, and then Whiskash in, what the heck? I only just realized that. What is it? Only on people, I shout out people. Next Pokemon we got is Nine Lego here. This is a bulky set with Charge Beam, Acid Spray, Grass Knot, and Foul Play. Now, this could definitely be Electric type, right? I never really looked at this as a rock type. I thought it could be like a jellyfish, right? You know, they've got those electric currents running through them too. And it gets a lot of electric type moves. So I thought, why not let's run this as a poison and electric type? Be pretty cool, right? It's funny because when you look at it, they actually same, they share the same four times weakness to ground moves, which is really cool. So I only get that uh, plus one in special defense there for the beast boost, getting rid of the Dragonite, which is very good. Now, this is a max health, max defense, assault vested set, right? And it's very, very bulky. Next Pokemon and last Pokemon is the Tyranta. I've got Grass Knot. Uh, that should do all right damage. Once again, I don't have any special attack AVs. I'm running like purely bulk, right? It still does very good. Now, Tyranta is going to go for a stone miss there. And it doesn't miss. It connects. So we got, uh, that was three minutes left about there. I'm going to keep firing off these Grass Knots. It's about a four hit KO against the Tyranitar, right? Now, Tyranitar is going to land another stone miss there. And I don't get credit. I know you expected one. I was too. That would have been four Pokemon there that got critted on the last one. Now, that is the final Grass Knot I'm going to be getting off here, and Tyrant is going to finish me off with the Breaking Swipe. I've still got one more Pokemon here left, and this Pokemon is going to be able to outspeed the uh, Tyrant and take it out with a very, very disrespectful move. That is Kling Clang. So this definitely, I thought, could be an electric and steel type Pokemon. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, electricity and currents are powered through like mechanical things. So I definitely feel that could work as well. So finishing off with a Rock Smash, Disrespect KO. And then, my friends, is the first battle. Thank you, Malzva. That was a very interesting. That was like a Lance Hyper Beam team there. All right, next Pokemon battle we have against uh, Keon Dre. I think this one was on my Twitch or was on... Uh, it was on white, random Wycom battle. I'm not too sure. This is also a theme team as well. I wonder if you can guess it. It must be, it must be hard to guess after the first Pokemon. So we've got this Porygon C strategy here, right? I think I said Porygon C, not Z. What would Porygon C be, though? That'd be like, it'd be like in a big C shape and maybe have two heads. And it could fire two Zap Cannons. So I want to get a Zap Cannon land on this Gallade, right? I'm not going to say that it's going to one-shot it, but it will do heavy, heavy damage, right? So this is a special Glade here. Uh, Zap Cannon is going to miss. And now we've got another Aura Sphere from the uh, Glade here. And it's going to take me out. So I had no luck there with the Paragon Z landing any Zap Cannons whatsoever. I just, I don't know. Like, I think I've used all my luck up for a while. Like, after those Sheer Colts. Wait, that didn't happen. After those Zap Cannons, right? Um, you know, it's, it's been bad, right? I think I need to do... I think I need to do a brand new one hit KO team. It's been it's been three years. I've asked you people in the community tab. A lot of them you actually wanted to see an updated one for Gen 8. So I'm going to try and bring back my luck with a new one hit KO team. I'll try and get that out to you this month. I've got a couple of uh, interesting ideas. 
so regardless, let's get back to this uh, matchup here for any uh, Galate and the uh, Nihiligo. Almost forgot his name for a second there. And I'm going to be trying to get as many charge beam boosts as humanly possible here, right? And then I thought I could go for Acid Spray to drop the opponent's special defense at the same time. So after a couple of Acid Sprays, you know, it does it very, very hard, even with no special attack AVs there, right? So getting a, uh, a negative two on the Galate, which is beautiful. Now I can go for a charge beam. Hopefully... I'll get a boost and take the Glade out at the same time, right? Its best uh, special move here is Aura Sphere. So I'm guessing, I think it might be Choice. I think it's only been using that move the whole time. So I believe this could be Choice, Choice Scarf, or just Choice Specs, right? So bye-bye, Glade. I'm going to get a special defense boost there on my Nia Lego. And the next Pokemon to come out here is the Dewblade. So like, okay, Dewblade. So going for a Charge Beam here. It doesn't have very good special defense, but it does take this one fairly well. So, like, okay, it's going to be a special set with Steel Beam. And I did get a boost there before, but since I've got such a small amount of health left, Dewblade is going to take me out there in one shot. Bye-bye, Nihiligo. Next point I want to swap in here, I've got is my Rhyperus. So I thought, okay, if I can get a, uh, a Rock Polish off, hit the Steel Beam and get the Weakness Policy. Yeah, I got to live it, though. That's the thing. I should be able to live it, though, depending on what item my opponent, of course, is running here, too. I'm going to have to assume they're running Modest Nature, right? So, yeah, uh, here comes the Steel Beam firing out those swords, and Rhyperia gets absolutely dunked in one shot. I think it was Choice Specs, people. I've got to say, I believe that one would have been Choice Specs, or at worst, it was Everlight. So, bye-bye, Rhyperia. However, since it's a uh, Steel Beam, right, the Dewblade is going to go down to Recall. So, I guess, worst-case scenario, I did fight the opponent's Pokemon, right? Next Pokemon we got is the Tapu Lili. Now it's like, wait, wait a second. Why is there no scummy psychic terrain on the field? Or it's a different ability, right? Now it's going to be knocking off my throat spray. Now, me being Pimp Knight, right? I know what physical moves Tapu Lili can get, right? And it did a little bit too much damage to me. So, like, I think I know what Pokemon this could be. They're trying to troll me with a Zoroark, right? So what I'm gonna be doing, right, I'm gonna be kipping, uh, kicking, not kipping, I need a mud kip on the screen there, kicking this uh, Tapu Lili there in the face, and it's gonna focus that So Now the uh, Tapu Lili is gonna be revealed as a very, very naughty Zoroark. So Zoroark has only got like dark type moves, apparently it's got foul play and knockoff, and that's not gonna do a lot to my Zapdos there. I may actually manage to live. That was another critical win. I've been getting critical win like all the time here. So go for Ancient Power, hoping for a scummy boost there. Hopefully, maybe a plus one and everything would be a hand, you know, maybe about a handle the next Pokemon. I'm not too sure, right? So bye bye, Zarok, and hello, Tapu Lili again. This time, we're going to have some Psychic Surge on the field. So my best play here would be to go for maybe Hurricane and do as much damage as possible, right? So I'm going to outspeed the Tapu Lili, which is very, very good there. Getting that beautiful Hurricane damage off, it's a clean... Two hit can go if I can get one confusion hit, right? So Tapu Lili is confused. Those chickens are flying around. And here comes an Astonish. It's a physical set. And I live the Astonish, which is uh, pretty astonishing. Hurricane's going to miss. Tapu Lili snaps out and takes me out with this freaking Astonish. That is the most disrespectful play in this whole battle. Like, how can I get so unlucky? Like, I miss the Hurricane. They snap out, and then they take me out of the Astonish. I, I might have to quit Pokemon here. Next Pokemon to come in here is the Wish Catch. Here comes a Giga Impact, Tapu Lili. Now, I will say this. I did have plans to do a physical Tapu Lili sweep. Uh, the great thing is here, I need to tell you something really important, right? Tapu Lili now gets play rough on the physical side. I know you're excited about that. I am. So that could be... You know, that could actually mean we might be able to have a chance of getting a physical Tapu Lili spray. Anyway, so it's going to be uh, living on one health there to a crit from my uh, from my Whiskatch. And I'm going to be able to tank these hits all day, which is really, really nice. Here comes a play rough from the uh, Tapu Lili there. So it's got, uh, this is the other move. It's got like foul play, uh, astonish, play rough, and giga impact. The other moves I was going to run on my original one, minus play rough, because it didn't have any fairy type moves, right? So... Now it's got that, I'm very excited. We might be able to run. I was thinking like maybe a weakness policy set because there's no real other way. Like it's not like it's got max knuckle or anything like that, right? Now the next Pokemon to slide into this matchup is the Milotic. I was like, this might be weakness policy bait, but it is their second last Pokemon, so maybe it's not. Now here comes the Dragon Tail on my Whiskash. That's going to swap me right out of this game. Now my last Pokemon, once again, is the Kling Clang. Now Kling Clang does have an Electric type move here, right? But I want to conserve this because I do have a strategy in mind I want to do here. And it's probably one of the best Pokemon on my team. I've used this set like countless times, right? 
So uh, swapping my Clink Lang out there and swapping in my Whiskash. Whiskash, I feel, can probably do like one more spark if it's lucky, right? So here comes the uh, Milotic. It's a physical set with Waterfall. Doesn't do a lot of damage there. And we've also got our leftovers too, so we're going to have a little bit of recovery. I do feel like Clink Clank is going to have to get me the dub in this game because Whiskash doesn't do a lot of damage. And it's kind of got a low amount of health too. And there's one more Pokemon after this Milotic too. That's very scary. So here comes another waterfall here. I get flinched. That really, really sucked there. I would have loved to get another spark off. I may have been able to like paralyze it. You never know, right? So uh, some more leftovers recovery there on my Whiskash. And Milotic can freely go for another waterfall on my Whiskash. So I was hoping that I was going to live this one. And Whiskash is going to go down. And that flinch absolutely destroyed me right there. Leg uh, the next Pokemon and the last Pokemon is my Clink Clank. Now, this is a shift gear set I've got on this one. Gear grind and shift gear, so normal sort of moves you uh, run on that. And the only uh, the only physical wild charge uh, strategy I could come up with was with the shift gear, right? And I did rock, po uh, rock polish, rock smash for, uh, you know, when it actually was in Dynamax, right? So that could give me a plus one in attack. So a pretty good uh, move to use in Dynamax. Outside of Dynamax, it was hot smoking trash, right? So Milotic is going to go for another waterfall there. I know that I can definitely take this out now. All I've got to do is go for the Dynamax and then click the Wild Charge button. The good thing about this, right, is I can go for Max Lightning, and that'll put the Electric Train on the field too. Now, the EVs on this one, if I didn't mention before, I gave this Max Speed, and I gave it Max Attack Animate Nature because... Shift gear already gives it plus two in speed, so you don't really need that extra speed. I find you need the extra attack, right? So that's usually how I run a uh, you know a physical sweeping cling clang, right? Uh, so we got the Max Lightning here coming, and it's going to be hitting very hard. There's no way Milotic will be able to live that one, and that is down. Now, there is one Pokemon left that I was wondering what I can actually do to it, right? I do have Max Steel Spike, which will be my other stab move. And I've got, like, another move, too, there, which is Rock Smash. But, unfortunately, in this matchup, right, I can't use it because it's a Giratina. And I won't be a Giratina winner if I use Max Knuckle. So, now, they haven't actually Dynamaxed a Pokemon either. So, it is going to be a Dynamax Giratina. This thing is going to be so bulky. Now, the item I was running on my Kling Clang 2 was Shukabiru, right? I did think about running Weakness Posse, but I thought in the case... Let's say someone does activate Weakness Policy on my Clink Clank. It'll just be way too strong, man. Like, you could just click the gear grind and just instantly win. So I went for a little bit of a different item here for a little bit more of a challenge, right? So going for the Max Steel Spike does pretty good damage there to Giratina, if you think about it. And now Giratina is going to... I'm not sure. It's either going to go for a Ghost-type move, and then it went for a Ground-type move. It's like, wow, my Shukaberry actually came in effect there, which is great. Now, when you look at the damage here... After the Shukabri hits, like that would have done a, a really big amount of damage there and probably put me into a low amount of health, right? So we're going to get a special defense rise on the Giratina. I don't know whether this is coming from like Earth Power or it's a physical set. I really don't know, but I'm just trying to do as much damage as I possibly can, right? So I've got uh, my Dynamax is almost up here. We got the Giratina go for yet another Max Quake here, uh, bossing at special defense. That's not going to matter to me because I can use Gear Grind, right? After I do come out of Dynamax. But man, as you can see, my Max Steel Spike isn't doing like loads and loads of damage here. So I'm going to need a really, I'm going to need a Critter on both gears. Like both of these gears need a Grind and they're going to need a Crit, right? So go for the first Gear Grind and it's not going to be critting there, unfortunately. That's really, really sucks. Like, I believe a crit would have probably taken that one out. So Giratina is going to go for its final Max Quake there, and Kling Clang is going to not be able to tank that one. A very close battle there in the end, and of course, on both of them. Hope you enjoyed my pseudo electric type team. It was very uh, electrifying and fun to do. I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Peace out, people.